All right, that is Act 1 of the podcast. Act 2 is available right after this one. Go check it out. What are you doing? Don't miss a second of it. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to you all. My goodness, the Eric's Angel podcast has begun. Happening once again, of course, as it always does, from the Impact Power Sports Studio. Impact Power Sports, you can find them online at impactpowersportsmi.com. They are awesome under new ownership. Last ownership was great. This ownership, also great. So, yeah, that was a scenario where, like, family owned, and then they sold it to another family. And then the first family still works there. They're like, ah, we just want to sell it. That I think that's great. You know, you build the business, and then it's it's worth a pretty penny. You sell it, and then you still work there? Are you kidding me? That's awesome. Anyway. They are great. You can find them in Rockford, Michigan, along 14 Mile Road. I know our very own Nick in the arena has several of their uh, of their products in his stable of awesomeness. Uh, they are awesome. And uh, you can check out the inventory at impactpowersportsmi.com. Welcome. Uh, Matt says gonna have a good show today it's fuck your feelings friday now i don't i don't know what you mean by that i don't want to i don't want to say uh fuck you to anybody's feelings that's kind of silly i don't think that gets anybody anywhere when you decide yeah fuck your feelings you know i think you just kind of like uh I mean, you don't have to go out of your way and say, hey, I'm here for your feelings. But I, I don't know if it's going to get you any uh, any good things in life if you walk around saying, fuck your feelings. Take it from me. I mean, I've had a bad week. I had one full day uh, now two days ago, not yesterday, but the day before, of saying, fuck your feelings. And uh, that didn't get me anywhere. I mean, I lost all my Pooh Bear points. I damn near lost my Pooh Bear. I don't know what I would do if I lost my Pooh Bear. Not everybody gets a Pooh Bear. And if my Pooh Bear is gone, I'm lost. One of the uh, added benefits of having a Pooh Bear is having your laundry taken care of you. Uh, taken care of. Boy, I sounded like Freebear there. T- uh, taken care of for you. Pooh Bear would do the laundry, and then I lost that. You know, she said, all right, well, fuck you. Then you do your own laundry. And that was on that bad day on Wednesday when I lost all my Pooh Bear points. I fought with her in the morning, and then I fought with her when she got home from work. Totally different fight. I shared it all with you. Go back and listen to the uh, Wednesday show. It was so bad. Everybody was pissed at me in the audience. I told you word for word what happened. I even put Pooh Bear on in an awkward phone call, and everybody hated that too. She didn't even know she was on the air. It was so bad. Yesterday, no incidents. I did nothing to upset Pooh Bear. And then today, I, uh, you know, I got her. Uh, I have to wake her up. Uh, woke her up and very nice to her. Of course, now trying to, trying to win back Pooh Bear points. And she said, uh, you still have zero. And I said, yeah, I, I expect, I expected that, but, but I will say this. Uh, she came into this studio and oops, sorry, O'Neal. um, uh, on the floor here, I'm going to reach over and grab it. This is my clean laundry. And um, I have to fold it. You know, I I haven't yet done that. And I, I set it in here. And so I didn't think anything of it, but she comes in here today and she's like, is that your laundry? I go, yeah. 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 Because remember, she said, fuck you, do your own laundry. 
And uh, you won't believe what she said to me. Uh, she said, do you want me to do your laundry? And I said, no, thank you. I got it. No big deal. Now, I don't mind doing the laundry. Um, I'm not hard-pressed to have someone do it for me. Uh, Maureen says you have to fold it right out of the dryer or it will be a mass of wrinkles. Sheesh. That's a pro tip right there. I like that. I should have done that. I'm going to have to implement that. I normally do, but I, I ran out of time for whatever reason. You know, I mean, come on. Rome wasn't built in a day here. I mean, here I am. I, I, I'm, I'm put into commission to do the laundry. And now after I show you my first basket of laundry and I'm, I've already got uh, uh, armchair laundry coaches uh, doing that. Okay. Come on now. Matt says she is definitely cheating. She is being nice as a smoke screen. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that. Um I wouldn't blame her though. I said, "No, that's okay. I can do it." And I honestly don't mind doing it, you know. I just she just it's something she just took up the mantle of doing it and then it would it would get done, so that was it. No big deal. Um, same way that I just started doing the, uh, mowing the grass or raking the leaves or, you know, whatever. Um, but I don't mind doing the laundry. And, uh, she says, now she, so I say, N-, I go, that's okay. I, I mean, you don't have to do that. And she says, um, you don't trust me, do you? And I'm like, oh boy. Okay, here we go. And I go, no, I, I trust you. I just, no, it's not a big deal. So now I'm starting to think if I make it seem like the punishment that she gave me of A, losing all Pooh Bear points and almost losing Pooh Bear and then... The punishment of do your own fucking laundry. If that's not really a punishment for me, and it's not. I mean, come on now. If I indicate to her that it really wasn't a big deal that I have to do my laundry, I think I kind of pissed her off. Because when she said, do you want me to do your laundry for you? She was expecting me to say, oh, thank you so much. Oh my God, I'll never... I'll never mouth off again, but I didn't. I went, nah, that's all right. I got it. No big deal. So I think I did something wrong again by saying, eh, nope, I'll do my own laundry. And now she thinks that I don't trust her to do the laundry right. And, and that's kind of what Rich indicates. He says, now you're doing your own. It'll be done right. And Matt says, easy is a master of the dickhead double down. Um, Kenny said, you should have said, no, I deserve this punishment, at least for now. But thank you. And again, I'm sorry. Um. Yeah, that's not really my character. I already apologize and and uh, and and we've put that behind us. So I mean that that's not bad, but um yeah, that's that's not really my thing. You know. I'll just do the fucking laundry. It's not a big deal. Bulls on Parade 91 says she secretly wants to do your laundry. Corey says it shows you're not dependent on her. It's a mental chess game. Uh, I don't know. 
Now she feels unneeded, Tim said. Trouble in the Zane house. Well, all I know is, um, I mean, I can only, I don't know. Am I supposed to let her do the laundry now? Uh, Yankee suck 138, AKA Kevin in Northern Ontario says they get their wires crossed when things don't go the way they expected, even if it's not a big deal. Matt says anyone can do laundry except for Pooh Bear, obviously. Yeah, I, I'm not going to support that comment. This all boils down to some of my pieces of clothing occasionally smell like mold or mildew. Um, so we'll see what happens. I guess every month, I didn't realize this. You're supposed to clean the inside of that fucking thing the way I did, uh, this week after I was, after she bestowed the punishment and said, fuck you do your own laundry. I then moved on and, uh, I ran a load of, uh, vinegar through the uh, uh, cleaning cycle of the washer and followed it up by uh, bleaching the inside of the uh, the deal, running bleach through and then did a regular load with uh, with no clothes in it to kind of rinse it all out. And, and then I started over and I did my clothes and they don't smell like mildew. So make no mistake. If I'm doing it, it doesn't matter what it is. It's going to be outstanding. Um, Corey making horrible comments. Corey's kind of like a uh, low-hanging fruit jokester from time to time. Nick says, just get the A-Fresh tablets. They work great. I think we have those. I think we actually do have those. That's a trick that I didn't know about. You know, I'm not a veteran of this. I'm, I'm relatively new to this. But if they were going to award rookie of the year, rest assured, I'd get it. Anyway, that's kind of top of mind today. Uh, no trouble now. Two days. Somebody suggested I get one of those days without a workplace incident calendar. It is now officially two days without a workplace incident. Uh, sorry for the late start today. Typically, I'm supposed to start at 9 a.m. on Friday, Eastern Time. Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Live on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live or download the Twitch app. Search Eric Zane live and follow the page for those that are watching on facebook and youtube i'm going to kick you out now uh, i do this hoping that you'll let me like oh yeah all right there's eric zane i haven't heard from him in years and after i kick you out here you'll go over to twitch and sign up and become part of that audience so there you go thank you for being here i have a patreon Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. That is a pay platform for super fans who want more of the Eric Zane show podcast, as well as a number of other shows, including who are these free beers where we had an amazing night last night. More on that in a bit. You can sign up for it at patreon.com slash Eric Zane patreon.com slash Eric Zane seven days free put in a credit card sign up and then immediately cancel it once you cancel it you still get the seven days free once that seven days is up and you're like you know what uh I still like this I still want to watch I still want to listen 
uh, go back into your little profile there and uh, enable your card that is saved. And then I will charge you accordingly. Either $5 a month for the audio or $10 a month for the audio, video, live streams. Another pro tip, you can save 10% if you sign up for one full year. So what is $60 a month for all of the audio? I'm sorry, $60 a year for all of the audio is $54. What is $120 for the audio, video, live streams is $108. All at patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Drop me a line via email, eric at ericzaneshow.com on the Shoreliner Striping inbox. Thank you so much to Shoreliner Striping for being part of the show. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. Where we have the great food giveaway coming up December 20th. That is a Friday. More on that in a bit. God bless the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. 231-332-6505. Buy now, refinance later. Trusted place to get your mortgage from anywhere in the U.S. Call Mario, mention my name. 231-332-6505. Longtime sponsor of this show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mario. He's one of the old school ones. In fact, most of my sponsors on Friday shows our old school. Uh, you got Mario, you got Irvine's, you got A&E, you got TC Paintball, and some new ones too. Or I don't want to necessarily say that this one is a new one, but he's been around a little while. That would be Frank Fuss. Uh, my policy shop insurance, you need an insurance professional when it comes to your health care. If you are in between jobs, or you own your own business, or your employer does not offer health care, then you get your insurance from the marketplace. Healthcare.gov, otherwise known as Obamacare. If you want someone to do that for you so that you don't mess it up, reach out to Frank. He's fantastic. All right? Go to buyinsurancehere.com. That's buyinsurancehere.com. And Frank's great team will help you with everything you need to make the appropriate choices at healthcare.gov. Frank's services are free. Consumers pay nothing. Um, He gets paid by the insurance companies. So when he gets you into a policy, let's say it's Blue Cross Blue Shield, Blue Cross Blue Shield will compensate Frank. He also can help you with any life insurance policies to protect you and yours. He is a Medicare specialist and social security professional. He can help you navigate all of those important entities, whether it's you or someone you know or love, buyinsurancehere.com. That's buyinsurancehere.com. Our beloved pal, Jeremy who is part of the Fatathon has had a month. You know, dad passed away. His dad Feech passed away last week and we were all here for him. I, I have some more sad news. Um, his puppy dog had to go to the rainbow bridge yesterday. And this is devastating news, but And, you know, some might say easy talk about this last on the show, but no way, because I need him to feel the love, uh, from all of you. Okay. Um, Amanda says, I was just about to say, I bet his dog died. I don't know why that comment bothers me so much. But it really does. I don't know. Why would you write that? Is it just me? Is it just me that that sounds weird? I don't know. I think that might be a little weird for you to just bust that out. 
I was just about to say, I bet his dog died. It seems a little rough. God. Anyway, uh, Chris describes it. It was written in sensitivity. Yeah, and, and she continues talking, and I don't think it's helping. She writes, I just mean that everybody's dog's been dying on Facebook. I feel bad. <sighs> anyway, uh, Jeremy. That's a bitch, man. God, is that tough. I, I can't. I mean... For those who have been in that spot before, uh, that is uh, that is just that is just terrible, buddy. And I I'm, I'm so sorry. And, and you're right. Fuck the month of November. Um, I can't even begin to explain. Um, I I just can't put myself into how much you've had to go through this month. So, buddy, we're all uh, we're all thinking about you. Um, yesterday he talked about how the dog hadn't been eating and I was like, Oh, well, but you know, take, take the dog to the vet. That that'll be fine. Um, and you know, just, um, so sorry, buddy, that that had to happen. He says his heart is broken. Jeremy took this dog in from the, uh, animal shelter. You know what? It was just like an adoption. I adopted Leslie eight years ago. The shelter thought she was about two and a half when she showed up. I went to the shelter and she was shy and scared, previously abused, so she had dealt with a lot before I found her. She was so scared in the corner of her cage, I sat next to her, and after about half an hour, she rested her head on my lap. Oh, my God. I filled out the adoption application immediately. That fear never left Leslie. She was scared of pretty much everything. But whenever I got home, I'd see her head poking around the corner. I'd round the corner and see her tail wagging. And it instantly just made me so happy. I adopted her to give her a chance at a happy life and to pay me back for that. She gave me a happy life. God, this month sucks. I attached a few pictures of, a, of my sweet baby. I'm going to share those with you. Yeah, I don't mean to make you cry, big fella. But sometimes this is this is like part of the process. So, oh my God. What a baby dog. <gasps> oh, man. Hi, honey. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, man, Jeremy. I'm so sorry, big guy. What a doll. And look at you all sexy with your shirt off. My God. When you get ripped, you're going to get so much tail. But anyway, great dog. I'm so sorry. Um, tough, tough work. Tough work. I'm, uh, I can't. I've, I've been there. I know what this is like. And all you can do is just is just uh, remember those good times, buddy. Uh, Sarah says, what a sweet puppy dog. Bob's crying. Nick says, you're missing the arms of an angel music bed. I love the name. Leslie, that's a great name for a dog. I love dogs with uh, with people names. Corey says, dogs are family members. Uh, Amanda says... Oh, did his dog take a dirt nap? Quote from Amanda. Did his dog croak? Amanda says, this is why I seem insensitive. If I let, let the feelings go, I'll lose it. It's a coping mechanism. Shut up. Can you shut up for the rest of the day? Uh, I was joking with Amanda said, did your dog take a dirt nap? Those are jokes that were made by others. 
But trust me, you're annoying as fuck. Shut up. You realize you're like never here. And when you are, I just want you to shut up. God, you're a pain in the ass. You really are. Fuck me. We had a hell of a time on uh, Big Fraud Thursday. Kenny made an outstanding appearance. All right, you must see this. Okay, so he shows up to the Zoom. He doesn't go by the name Kenny. He goes by the name Eric is a cockhead. And his image, you can't see his camera. It's just an image of a penis with like a face on it. And um, all the while, I'm referencing the highlights of the uh, earlier in the day about Kenny and the whole business of, hey, yeah, you got a nice smile. I'm going to follow you. <laughs> yeah. That whole sexy talk thing. And um, so and then out of the blue, apparently he had to address something. So he turns his camera on. He goes, oh, by, by the way. And that some of that was out of bounds. There was some of that that was out that was out of bounds, and he took it all in stride. He took that shit like a goddamn uh, champion. All right. Let me just tell you: any of you who thinks that Kenny uh, uh, isn't doing right by the way he handles shit, fuck you. Kenny is probably my favorite person in the entire audience right now. Do any of you have any idea how the emotions of Kenny uh, make this show better in every way? If we did not have Kenny here just being his wonderful self and hilarious, we'd be fucked. And I think, you know what my theory is? I think there's a small percentage, maybe even a big percentage of show business. I think he knows more than you think he knows about what's hilarious. And I think it's kind of like a little, uh, uh, what do they call that in wrestling? Kayfabe, kayfabe. You know, like in pro wrestling, when the two guys are staring at each other in the squared circle and they kind of, they can communicate via just a glance of their eyes and they know where the other one's going to go. Okay. He senses what I'm doing. I think this is my theory. And then kind of creates this whole narrative that allows for a, very effective bit of theater that the average person is not even aware that it's theater. He is blurring the lines better than Vince McMahon. I'm telling you, think about that. Now he may have started being like, wait, what is Eric doing? When I brought up his, uh, idiotic, a uh, flirty, flirty, boberty bullshit with new girl. But I think that his approach, he recognizes what's happening and allows that to take hold in the audience. Uh, Megan says he was legit mad. Oh, without a doubt. I, without a doubt. But he also knows that it was fantastic. (laughs) Kenny says, he writes, yeah, truth be told, I got super pissed yesterday. Had to deal with it a little. Then I came back around. It's all good. Um, 
Corey says the hissy fits are what makes it entertaining. Okay. Now, all kidding aside, I think he wants to rip the eyes out of Corey and uh, Tophis and skull fuck you. Uh, Kenny says, you did make it worse at the end of the Patreon. Yeah, I, I don't remember what I did. You'll have to tell me. Now, that does not surprise me one bit. It, it doesn't surprise me that I don't remember. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that it pissed you off. It doesn't surprise me that I did it. He says, I don't want, I don't want my penis anywhere near them. Thank you very much. I don't know what that means. That might be a reference of something that I said. Referring to your penis, you don't want your penis anywhere near them. Ben Glaze is here. He writes, just near Amanda. Uh, Corey, not recognizing a good thing, writes, to be frank, he started throwing jabs at me first and I let it go for a while before I started sending them back. Kenny says, no, you dumbass, you just said skull fucking them. Oh, sorry. Uh, Kenny says, Corey and Tophus are dead to me. See what you did? You see, you guys always take it too far, you assholes. Tyler says, Kenny impression is a staple of this show. True. True. And now with the added element of Kenny sexy talk, hey baby, <laughs> yeah, hey, ooh, ooh, you got a pretty smile. You're getting a follow from me. Yeah, I know you're a stranger. Uh, Kenny sexy time story hour. Kenny after dark. All a winner. Matt says, Kenny, you know, EZ has asshole amnesia. As soon as he says it, he forgets it without a doubt. You, there's no way I'm going to remember any of this. Look, if I say anything on here and it catches anybody off guard and you want to address it, like say, Hey, I, I gotta have a serious conversation with you. You got to understand you are then talking to Eric Zaitunian. You're going to have to give me as much background as possible to get me caught up because I, I, I'm just, it's, it leaves as soon as it, as soon as it leaves my mouth, I, I forget it. It's just, it's gone. All right. Stevie writes, huh? But I don't know what she means by that. Context. Uh, Kenny says, question. Did you suspect the cockhead thing was immediately me? Was me immediately last night. Um, a little, not totally. I said, I looked around as to who was here in the chat, who was in the chat, in the zoom, I should say. And then I'm like, who's missing that would do it. That would do that. That would actually think that. And no one came to mind except you. So Linda and Maureen said, that they absolutely knew it was you. I generally thought it was you only by process of elimination. You know? Hey, it's your old pal EZ for my latest and greatest sponsor, Uncommon Goods. Wouldn't it be exceptional if you got a gift for that special someone, and when they opened it and took a look at it, they didn't immediately start to forget about it? It's time to up your game and get a fantastic thoughtful gift with uncommon goods uncommon goods were fantastic artisan type creators make amazing gifts for you to check out and it's all in one place uncommongoods.com the choices are endless go to uncommongoods.com 
and see what they have to offer. You could get lost on their website just looking at the fantastic gifts, and you'll have to start writing it down. You're like, oh, this person would love this so much. Oh, my gosh. All of your shopping will get done just like that. You're welcome. You'll get lost in a rabbit hole of awesomeness at UncommonGoods.com. And when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. Many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out for the holiday season. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go to UncommonGoods.com. And if you use my special code, you will get 15% off of your next gift that you purchase. UncommonGoods.com slash Zane for 15% off. UncommonGoods.com slash Zane. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. Uh, but overall, it was a uh, really, really good time. We had a lot of uh, the fun chats about stuff. It was a good, uh, good event uh, with the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast preceded by Who Are These Free Beers? Where we proceeded to beat the shit out of that show. Uh, Megan says Jimmy was sad. Matt says, I think Easy welcomed you like a new person. You mean I like said, hey, <laughs> hey, ooh, ooh, you got a pretty smile. You're getting a, you're getting me following you now. Yeah. Spider called a fly. Hey, um, uh, all right. Uh, well, it's uh, it's the Eric Zane Show podcast friends get together. Uh, Kenny, I'd like you to meet uh, so-and-so. Ooh, hey, I like that smile. I'm going to have to follow you on social media. Uh, Corey says, I'm actually going to be in Nashville in February, probably. You should go out to dinner with uh, Kenny. Me and Kenny can get a beer together. Kenny, um, it's tough to uh, win him over. Like, he does have some degree of grace where he will forgive and forget. But um, you've been so damn harsh with him that I don't, I don't know if that's possible. You and Tophis have been like over the top mean. And I don't. I don't know if he would ever trust you. You know, it's just been too much. Uh, Kenny writes, Corey, hey, hey, Corey, <laughs> you should look up what dead to me means. That means you died. So, you know, I, I don't think that that's going to happen. Uh, Megan says harsh is not. The, she says, I don't think harsh is the right word. Uh, <laughs> Corey writes, like I said before, you have no legitimate reason to be this mad at us. And then he says, I've done nothing to you. No, I, I think you did. I, I think you, I think you were too mean to him. You see, you got to learn that, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit, you got to try to read the room a little. Sometimes it just gets a little too much. Even I know how to do that. Like I know, I know that I can push people too far. I know that sounds crazy and some of you don't believe it, but it's true. I don't want to, I don't want to drive anybody to have a terrible day. Um, Corey thinks I can see his comments like dead to me means I haven't blocked him. Wait a minute. So did you block him or you didn't block him? I'm, I'm confused. So he's blocked, right? So all these things he's saying, you can't. Okay. 
I don't know why I had such a hard time figuring that out. <laughs> Corey says the fact that he's having such a little baby hissy fit that he feels it needs to block me just makes it seem more ridiculous. Matt writes, I'm on Kenny's side. I am too, by the way. There's a difference between jokes and being an asshole. I think you're being an asshole, Corey. And I think you need to stop being such an asshole. You and Tophus have kind of gone over the top. I love Kenny. And I don't want him upset. I mean, come on now. You can't call Kenny a baby and then make the baby comment, well, he started it. That, that That's ridiculous. So you're sitting there accusing him of being a baby and then you say something that a, a child would say with, he started it. That's stupid. Everybody in here, everybody in here is thinks Kenny is the absolute greatest. Even Sarah, who was referred to as the tank. Hashtag team Kenny. Hashtag tank. Ben says the anger is hilarious. Yes, that's true. That is true. Kenny angry is fucking great. Now, listen, I want you two to knock it off. I want you two to be friends for life. Now, this is what I want out of both of you. Now, Kenny might not be able to see it, but it doesn't matter. I can be the interpreter between you two fucking idiots. I will say this once. Corey must apologize sincerely. And then Kenny must apologize back. I don't care about who did what. You must apologize to each other. And then. No, you see, Corey says for what? Doesn't matter. Just pretend that you've done something horrible. Both of you haven't done anything. Both of you are 1 million percent innocent. Both of you have never, never said anything terrible about, uh, about each other. But humor your old pal EZ. And Corey, you apologize to Kenny right now, goddammit. And then Kenny, you apologize back. And then that's the end of it for the day. And then we'll address the rest later on. Corey is adding words that he shouldn't. He wrote, I'm sorry. But then he wrote, I'm sorry you take everything seriously and your fits are hilarious. You are such an asshole. All right. Well, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm going to get my way in this one. And that's unfortunate. Moving on. The great food giveaway is picking up some steam. It was a fantastic donation from Sarah Rook Ruck Roosh yesterday. And also a fantastic donation moments ago. From Maureen and her husband, TJ. I will have the dollar amount this weekend as to what it is going to cost to fund the great food giveaway. To purchase 150 Christmas meals for people. uh, When we are at Irvine's Auto Auto Repair Grand Rapids Hybrid on December 20th. I suspect it'll be in the ballpark of $3,000. 
If you want to participate and contribute, I am passing the virtual hat around. In the Twitch chat, I just posted my Venmo and my PayPal. Venmo at Eric dash Zaitunian. E-R-I-C dash Z-E-I-T-U-N-I-A-N. PayPal at Eric Zane Show. All one word. I will put that information in the show notes of the audio podcast. Um, I'm also going to include, I just included it on the chat, Megan's wish list from Amazon, Amazon wish list for the women's feminine hygiene products. I'll go over that tote board in just a moment as to how we are doing on that. After Maureen's donation, we have $779 collected. Thank you very much. That is our one, two, hold on. Let me add Maureen here. That is our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth donation. Chris D, Amy, Rebecca K, Adam, yet yeah, young Adam Schwab, Laura, Aaron S. Josh B, Karen, Sarah, and Maureen. As I speak. I just got another sizable donation. Kevin Kuypers is our 11th donation. In real time, I'm updating the tote board. $879 is in our coffers for the great food giveaway. Still very early. We are just under one month from the big day. Um, I know that it often starts early in fundraising, so that's totally cool. I, I know you lie. Look, 5 and $10 are awesome. Seriously. Some folks, I mean, can't afford a penny, and that's totally cool. Um, I get it. No worries. You don't have to worry about it. We got this. I just like keeping the tote board so we can keep a little progress report going of what's happening um, on our fifth year. Uh, we will have no, no problem getting this done. I'm just so thankful for all of you and your uh, volunteer spirit. Um, and if, you know, if you can't donate, again, it's totally fine. Just make your presence known. Okay, maybe... Um, share it with some friends. I haven't posted to social media yet about it. I've only talked about it here on the show. When I do post it to social media, maybe share it, you know, um, give me a share of uh, when I post it. There'll be a nice graphic that Megan is creating right now. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that, that will be part of it. In addition to that, we have uh, food from the Grand Rapids Pit Bull Alliance providing uh, pet food for dogs, cats, bunnies, whatever. They'll be there. People will pull up to Irvine's on December 20th, and then right around 3 p.m., there'll be a line of cars there. They stop at the pet station. They get their pet food. Then they go to the food station. They get their box of food. In that box, a beautiful Christmas ham. Beautiful, probably not a great word, delicious. Sack of potatoes, gravy, rolls, corn, Christmas meal right there. Free of charge, no questions asked. Then they go over to the pink zone where Team Pink will be passing out the women's feminine hygiene products. Now we have big goals for Team Pink. The goals are... Uh, 450, 510, 550 boxes 
of women in, women's feminine hygiene products uh, with three different styles and sizes of pads, uh, 60 boxes of tampons, and then 40 boxes of the world-famous period cups. Now, as of yesterday, and I'm about to update this, of the 550 that we needed, we had uh, easy math, 27, 39, 60 boxes of the 550 needed on the Amazon wish list. Let's update the tote board. Period cups still at 17. Thin maxis still at 10. Thick maxis still at 12. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, there has been zero progress. But I find that hard to believe. I think a lot of people uh, did, in fact... Um, do this. So maybe it's not updating or something like that. I have no idea. Um, so there you go. If you want, when you click on that link on the Amazon wish list, if you add all of those products to your cart and just buy it, it's a little bit North of $42 and, uh, you can get it shipped free to Irvine's. So that's awesome. All of that is being collected at Irvine's. Uh, or if you want to buy your own and send them along. But this is the way to go because you don't have to take anything to the post office or anything like that. But uh, I don't know. If you want to buy these products in the, on your own when you're at the store and bring them to Irvine's too, um, that's basically it. So there you go. Uh, question coming in. Chris says, when I click the link, Amazon wants to deliver it to me. How do I get them delivered to Megan? Stevie says, Chris, you just changed the delivery address to Irvine's. So there's your, there's your tip from Stevie. We are hoping for a, uh, no Pellerito great food giveaway. I mean, uh, uh the Pellerito brother, can be there. Hopefully Mike will not show up. Joe is welcome. Hopefully Mike does not show up. We are hoping for uh, a no Pellerito great food giveaway. Nobody wants that. And I would hate to be him in the eyes of Sarah, who has vowed to kick his ass if he shows up. And now I cannot support any type of violence, but Sarah is... You know, she's a corn-fed Allendale chick. And they're kind of crazy over there. So she will kick your ass. You don't have to worry about anything else, I don't think. I mean, I can't tell you what to do. It's a free country. But I think she's willing to go to jail. So I would I would stay away. Chris says no, she's a tank. Without a doubt. All right. That is your great food giveaway update. It's time to make a phone call. If I don't get this phone call done, people will get pissed off at me. This is our Detroit Lions victory cigar. That would be Kyle from a company that used to market on this show. I don't want to ruin a good thing. An attempt at least has to be made to get Kyle from a company that used to market on the show uh, as kind of like, um, you know, we don't want to jinx the Lions. They've been on an incredible role. We talk to Kyle every week. Sometimes we don't even talk about the Lions. Hi, this is Kyle. Please leave your name, number. I think that's the wrong Kyle. Was that Kyle Paffhausen? Wait a minute. Now I got to call that back if that's the case. 
I think I might have just called the guy that um, I did this show on BBL with. If that's the case, his phone's lighting up Eric Zane right now. And that's hilarious. I mean, that's really hilarious. Hi, this is Kyle. Please leave your name, number, and a message after the beep, and I'll get back to you. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To leave a callback number, press 5. Hello, I was trying to call Kyle uh, Tiller from uh, Dumpster Divers, and um, I may have dialed the wrong Kyle. When I when I press Kyle, uh, this is uh, Eric Zane, so I'm not sure which Kyle I'm calling, but I, I have a feeling it might be uh, my old radio uh, co-host, Kyle. Um, yeah, so... That's weird. Um, anyway, you should probably join me on my show. I have lots of questions. Okay, thanks. Have a great day. Yeah, I think that was a different Kyle. That's going to be weird when I run into him at like Meyer, which has happened. Okay. Uh, Chris says, "Is that was that Wiener too? Yeah, that was the guy that only worked for me for six days, and then he got uh, well, he quit technically, but that was so weird. Oh my god, that guy. Oof. Yo, hey, I just you know what's funny? I just okay, called I just called a different Kyle on accident." Holy shit, are you serious? Yeah, and it's a guy that uh, hates me. And oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so what was weird was um, I used to work with him in radio, and, you know, I, I tend to burn a lot of bridges. So oh, yeah. <laughs> this fucker hates me, and it, he, he had to have been sitting at his job thinking, what the fuck? What is going on? <laughs> That's awesome. So now it begs the question. So what what do you have me in your phone as? Just Kyle or like some sweet ass name? Um, I have it I have your actual last name after Kyle, but I forgot that. So I just called oh, the other shit. fucker and I and I hear this this weasel voice going, Hey, this is Kyle. Oh, please leave a message. I'm like, Oh fuck. So I actually <laughs> left a message saying, Hey, uh, uh, you should be on my podcast. Uh, sorry. And then that was it. Oh, hell yeah. So did this happen live on the show? So like, I can listen to this later and hear it happen. Oh yeah. Yeah. And in fact, there's a whole story about this guy that I can tell you, um, off the air that, Oh hell yeah. That this guy, he's a fucking idiot. And, uh, and, and wait till you hear the story about this guy. Uh, oh hell yes dude <laughs> let, let's put it this way when i was on bbl this this cock was on there i actually handpicked him to be my co-host on the air oh shit. and then six days after he started working with me um he had to resign because um something super ugly was um unearthed that made everybody go, what the fuck? And oh, it was, damn, dude. oh, dude, it was juicy. Holy dude, shit. That's less than a week. We're talking, what, six days, you said? Six to five by seven is 85. Only 85.7% of the week he lasted. Dude, that sucks, too. Yeah, <laughs> six fucking days, and then that was it. Never to be heard from again. Gone, oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'll tell you why I'm jealous of the fucking guy because you you, uh, you haven't handpicked me to be a fucking co-host with you. I tell you that, dude. Oh <laughs> bullshit! You are you're 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 a co-host. Jesus Christ! You're you're in here with me right now. God damn it, you idiot! I, uh, I'm just messing. <laughs> uh, you are described as the uh, victory cigar because we are on quite a roll. If I don't talk to you, the audience will be pissed off. 
because I know. And the the beautiful thing about what's been going on lately is I keep telling you scores that are obnoxious scores that I predict, and then we keep doing better than that. Because I said forty four ten, and it was fifty two six, baby. So fuck you, Adam. <laughs> And that's, we have, uh, the Lions are taking on another shit box team this weekend. Yeah, we, I, we gotta fuck them up, dude. I, I was doing a little, a little research ski, and uh, I saw that their quarterback uh, for the Colts is very, very bad against man coverage. And we, uh, we do man coverage quite a fucking bit, dude. So hell yeah, dude. Wow. I, um, that I had, um, I, I, I don't have enough knowledge to know that. So that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a, so the, yeah, the quarterback, I think he's thrown like seven interceptions, I think, against man coverage this year, and that's like basically all we do most of the time, so let's get some picks, dude, hopefully we get a pick for our rookie Arnold, dude, that'd be fucking sweet. What about the, uh, the guy that has hair like Thor, who broke his arm? Oh, dude, you know, fucking, that was, it was such a bummer, too, because like, it wasn't even like... It obviously wasn't as graphic as like the Hutchinson injury. Like you could, I couldn't even really tell what was going on. I was just like, and he, like I saw this picture where he was like holding his arm. I'm like, damn, his forearm still looks normal. But yeah, it must just hopefully it's just like not a huge, huge deal. Yeah, like you can just come yeah. back for the playoffs because yeah, I like his hair, dude. I've, I've always wanted long, fucking flowing hair like that, dude. I think they said two months that it would take for him to get back. Yeah, yeah, they said, yeah, six to eight weeks. But, I mean, think about it, dude. Like, just get that fucker, get that sucker, like, basically healed and just throw, like, a fucking steel cast on it. Yeah, just, or yeah, just, just, just put those, yeah, he'll be fine. Fuck it, you know? <laughs> Come on now. He's got two, you know? he's got two legs and an arm. It's not, Hutchinson's a little different. Yeah, yeah, you know what's wild? I've been, so this, so this week, me and Emilio were talking, because I was like, you know what's, I was like, I'm just like, I was, he like walked in the office, and I was just like watching a YouTube video of like, like ESPN analysts just sucking the Lions dick, and just being like, oh, the Lions are the fucking best team. I mean, that's never happened in my life, you know what I mean? Like, nobody's ever said the Lions are the best team in the NFL in my life, dude. So I'm just like soaking all this shit up, you know what I mean? And um, then the, one of the, some guy was like, trying to trash talk it wasn't even like you can't even trash talk the lines at this point but they they showed aiden hutchinson like walking in a pool or whatever yeah yeah and uh, he's like he's like oh it's just a pool like it's no big deal and like this other guy's like you shut the hell up well he didn't say that but he's like listen like a month ago or however long it was he was like his leg was broken dude like in half and now he's walking right and i'm like i don't know it is a pool but like hell yeah like come on hutch like i want, I want you back dude we have a uh one of my sponsors unlike you uh has <laughs> has said uh eric they will lose on thanksgiving his name is joe martinez from a and e okay. heating and cooling and um i am willing to bet 100 dollars on that game uh with joe martinez um the lions and the bears he can take the bears and the points i will take the lions and yeah. uh, and I will bet him one hundred dollars, and I don't even know if he's still in the chat paying attention to what I'm saying. Yeah, he's right there. I will bet you one hundred dollars on the Lions. I'll take the Lions. I'll give you the Bears and the points if uh, yeah, in that game. Yeah, dude, we're going to, I mean, okay, we're going to fuck the Bears up, but we have to, right? Like, we just, I mean, come on, dude, we're going to do it, dude, and it's going to be, actually, here's the real question here, Zane, if this season keeps going how it's going, and the Lions make the fucking Super Bowl, like, what are you going to do? Are you going to, like, host, like, an Eric Zane party, dude? Like, or what's going on? What are you thinking? Um, no, no, I don't <laughs> want any, um, no, <laughs> I don't want anyone here. I want, I'll make the food ahead of time. And then I'm going to sit in the goddamn chair and be quiet and just <laughs> soak it in. I did that last year for the NFC championship game. And for a period of time in that game, I was entertaining the idea that they were going to win because they were beating the shit out of San Francisco early in that game. And that yeah. was, that was fantastic. At the same time, conversely, it was terrible when they imploded. I mean, that was a bad feeling. I ended up walking away and going to take a shower before the game was even done. Damn. Yeah, I feel you on that one. 
Yeah, yeah, I guess that does make sense. I guess I was sort of thinking of uh, that that one time that I met you guys at fucking the Beltline Bar for a little bit there. I didn't know if you like that. That's what I was talking about. Oh, like some sort of yeah. Yeah, no, I I think I it, I mean this is serious business. This is serious. if they were in the <laughs> you're damn right. If they were in the Super Bowl, and um, uh, you know, I mean, this is maybe the one shot, mom spaghetti, and I I need to soak it all in. That's what I need to do. I mean, I know, that, dude. I, well, I mean, it, 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 even if we didn't, well, I'm not even gonna say it, but like, it might not be the only shot because I feel like. I haven't looked this up uh, at all, but like I feel like we signed a bunch of the good guys to extensions, and I think I, I'm feeling like nobody's contract is up at the end of this. Year. I mean, not nobody, but I mean, like we might be able to attract some, you know, like one or two good free agents. Maybe have another nice draft. Dude, we might be, we might be all right. That's exciting, but I also am uh, concerned because uh, we're probably going to be without uh, Aaron Glenn. And Ben Johnson by next year. Yeah, dude. If we win that Super Bowl, dude, then yeah, that would be that would be kind of a bummer. But who fucking knows, dude? You know, like any defensive coordinator that would that would come in, I feel like would like I think like the players would just tell him like we're gonna play man defense, we're gonna play man coverage. Like that's what we were doing last year, and it was fucking sick. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think that. Um, I think the hierarchy of um, the people that make the decisions, like the the general manager and Dan Campbell. They know what they're looking for, and yeah. um, and that, and I don't think they'll make a mistake of bringing in like a fuckface who's a pile of shit. I think they'll bring in a quality person that uh, buys into how they uh, how they how they run the football team. You know. Yeah. Hell, at this point, I'm thinking if we do got to hire any new coordinator, I feel like at this point the interview process is just. Dan Campbell just walks in there and just throws his dick on the table. And then, like, however the person reacts is is if we hire them or not. He just throws it on the table. And if the guy's like, oh, yeah, baby, then we hire him. You know what I mean? But if right. he's like, what are you doing? He's like, you know, you're not Lions material, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what? Well, and we know that, that he's got a monster crank. Dude, we just know it, dude. We just, we, there's just, there's no other way around it, dude. I mean, like he's just like the first guy, at least in my lifetime, that's just like, you know what? Like basically, if it's fourth down, we're basically gonna go for it. Which is like when you're playing video games. That's like video game rules. You know what I mean? And like we're just doing it, dude. And it's fucking awesome. I don't even have a problem with the fact that he seems like he voted for Trump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's class. I feel like he had to have, dude. I feel like there's no way he's walking around his house going, you know what, I think Kamala's the answer. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, no. (laughs) No, I don't don't even care. I'm like, I don't even care if he pledged his allegiance to Adolf Hitler. (laughs) That'd be a wild press conference, I will say. I'd say, well, that's the way it goes. That's what it takes to win. Go Hitler. We would change our team motto from uh, biting kneecaps to burning Jews straight up. Oh! (laughs) (laughs) If the Lions, if Dan Campbell said, we're replacing the Lion with the swastika, I would buy gear. (laughs) That's so fucking awesome. (laughs) All right. I'm probably going to get canceled for these jokes, but whatever the fuck. I know, I know. It's, it's the air, dude. It's, it, as long as you don't type anything of this, like don't type the transcript. Yeah, what we just never. Said, it's, you're good. right. It can only be spoken word. If it's typed, <laughs> it's a different story. It's, it's too much. It's just too much. Um, it is. All right. So, um, all right. Is there anything else going on that we need to discuss today? Well, Eric Zane is, uh, I don't, it's been a boring fucking week, Eric Zane. It's been, it's been just like nothing has been happening. Uh, JMO has been pretty fucking chill. Um, he did enjoy watching this last game, though. Uh, he came up and, uh, cause I was hunting this past weekend. Nothing happened. No fucking, I didn't see nothing. But, um, he, uh, came up and we watched the game and he was pumped, dude. I mean, whenever I just, whenever I just get up and yell, like, yeah, he's always like, yeah, Lion. Yeah. He's cute. He's, um, so he's it's four. Good, it's been a good season. No, uh, uh, he's three. He's three. Uh, he's, wait, wait. He'll be four in February. So yeah, he's like almost four. I guess okay. I start saying that now. Wow. Yep. Yep. Boy, they grow up fast. Well, that's good, buddy. Um, next week I'm probably only going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So um, I'll probably oh, yeah, miss you. 
No, dude, you better call me Wednesday, dude, so the Lions can win on Thursday, dude. Okay, fair enough. I can do that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. You have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Love you guys. Deuces. There, love you guys. Deuces. There it is. All right. That is Act 1 of the podcast. Act 2 is available right after this one. Go check it out. What are you doing? Don't miss a second of it. Thank you so much.